What's up guys? I'm Laura from Reading in Bed and this is going to be a Friday Reads. So um, I'm doing this 20 books of summer thing and I was going to make a separate video about it but decided against it. Um, it's really a book blog based challenge um, and I typically like to keep the blog things on the blog and the booktube things on the booktubes and um, you know. So I think I'm just going to do it that way but I will uh, provide links to everything below if this is something you're interested in. It's hosted by Kathy over at 746 Books um, who is a OG book blogger and uh, someone I really respect both because she's stuck to the theme of her blog um, you know for the whole time she's been doing it which is the fact that she uh, counted her TBR, like the book she owned and hadn't read, uh, came up with 746 and since then, like since 2013, has been, uh, you know, reading through that list. So very admirable and um, she's, you know, very well known uh, over in book blog land and in the publishing industry in the UK and all this stuff. So she's great. And she's been doing this 20 books of summer thing for five years now, I think. Um, so it's pretty simple. You just make a list of 20 books and you read them. Um, this year it happens between June 3rd and September 3rd, so we've already been at it for 10 days or so. Um, and the reading, I mean, most of the people taking uh, taking part in it talk a lot about the reading, myself included. I'm like, oh, you know, here's how many pages I have to read a day to keep up with the pace and all of that. But I mean, honestly, the reading isn't the hard part. Like, we're all book bloggers, vloggers, whatever. We all set our Goodreads challenges at 100 books a year. So, you know, 20 books in three months is not really that big a deal. And even if it is, um, you know, when it comes to reading, you can just apply blunt force to it, you know, just stay up later, get up earlier, and you can kind of uh, just power through it. But really, the, the challenge with 20 books a summer is that you also have to review them. <laughs> okay, so, um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I'm sort of panicking about actually writing 20 book reviews. And again, I'm probably going to write them on the blog. I I don't know that I'll really do any um, videos on individual books. What I'm thinking is I'll write the reviews on the blog and I'll try to be a little more consistent in my Friday readsing over here and that way I mean you'll kind of see my progress and I can link to reviews if anyone's interested in reading them. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say about the challenge. Um, I am already, actually, yeah, I am already falling behind in the reading too. <laughs> so even though I say like it's not hard to keep up with the reading, it actually is. Um, so, so yeah, the, the struggle is happening already. I've, um, finished my first book, was Winter Journal by Paul Oster, and there's a review of that up already. I have just finished, uh, my second book, which was The Watch That Ends the Night by Hugh McClellan. Um, I am in the middle of, uh, this one here, Me and Earl and the Dying Girl, and, um, and I'll be starting on book number four sometime this weekend, which is a Little Reunions by Eileen Chang. So um, I won't talk much about Winter Journal, but because I just finished this one, um, so The Watch That Ends the Night, this is a Canadian classic. Like this is a canonical taught in schools kind of classic, although I didn't get it in school. And it's one of those books where I know it's objectively good, but it just didn't do a lot for me. Um, I shouldn't even say it didn't do a lot for me. It did. Like, it was really interesting. I learned a lot about, um, you know, the fact that the Red Scare happened in Canada, too, uh, about Canadians who went and fought in the Spanish Civil War uh, right before World War II broke out. So these are topics that I, like, sort of knew a little bit about or, like, yeah, I, I kind of know that happened, but... Um, but yeah, didn't really, <laughs> didn't really understand it. Uh, it's set mostly in Montreal in kind of the 30s, 40s, early 50s. So, uh, you know, the, the way the landscape is described and the city at that time is described is it's like very beautiful. It's very affecting. But I guess it's the characters that didn't get to me, like, I, and the plot is just like super overwrought. I mean, I, it kind of has to be. It's a love triangle essentially, and um, the the woman in the love triangle is dying of a you know degenerative heart disease, and she's known that her whole life. So she's living her life, uh, you know, under a sword. I think they put it that she could die of a heart attack, like at any moment. So yeah, that is a very dramatic and overwrought kind of situation. Uh, the one, uh, Jerome, the one, one of the two men in this love triangle goes off to fight in the Spanish Civil War. The other one stays home and there's like, you know, lots of, um, political discussion and lots of, uh, oh yeah, just like lots of dramatics over the relationship. Um, that just, it, 
it didn't ring that true to me. I don't know. Uh, like I say, I know it's a good book, but there were things in here that interested me that didn't go anywhere. Like for example, um, the the daughter of Kathy and Jerome, uh, she in the present day is like 20 or so, maybe 19. Um, and she has this conversation with her stepfather, who is the other point in the love triangle, uh, like this very open conversation about how she's thinking about losing her virginity and like, is this the right guy? And when am I going to do it? And it's like 1951. <laughs> so I'm reading this and thinking, wow, like I've never had this open of a conversation with my dad. Um, so that was a little, but it didn't go anywhere. Like the conversation happened and then that was sort of it. So um, yeah, there were certain things that left me wanting more. Uh, the political stuff was well done and informative uh, and, and very um, applicable to the current day in many ways. And I, I think that's what I'm going to write about in my review. So anyways, um, I'm glad to have read it. It's, you know, it's a Camlet classic, but uh, is it going to be one of my favorites? No, not really. Um, so then that, uh, that means we have to talk about me and Earl and the Dying Girl. I'm not done yet. I am actually listening on audio, though I have this paper copy too. And this morning, um, I had this sitting out. My kids were very drawn to it because it's like such a colorful color cover. And even, you know, the inside has a lot of sort of graphic design elements. So they were looking through and they're like, oh, like they thought it was a kid's book and they wanted to know what it was about. Um, so I kind of told them what it's about and then they said, oh, that sounds dumb. Um, <laughs> and it is dumb. <laughs> like, honestly, even the, the book as a design, you know, piece is well done. And the audiobook that I'm listening to is actually also really well done. It's like a fully casted. And I think at least some of the voices are of the actors um, that acted in, in the adaptation. So like as an audiobook and as a print book, they're well done, but the actual, like the content is like not good at all. Um, so you wait for my review, I guess. We'll see how uh, savage I get on this book. Um, and uh, oh yeah, I did want to mention, so with the 20 books this summer, I made my list. Um, all the books on my list are ones that I own and haven't read, staying very true to sort of Kathy's thing on her blog. But I acknowledge that I had some library holds that might come in and might sort of disrupt that whole process. And so one of them come, one of them has come in this week and that's Ghost Wall. And now I'm just deciding, do I just read this thing, which is 110 pages and not count it? Or do I replace one of my 20 books with this one, um, which would certainly cut down on my page count a little bit. But to me, that's cheating, <laughs> right? So I haven't quite decided yet. We'll see what I do with this. I've just started, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's good. Duh. Like everyone's raving about this. Um, okay. So that, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm reading. So other than that, I just wanted to give a couple of quick shout outs to some other booktube channels. Um, first of all, to Amy at the dusty bookshelf. If you're paying attention at all, you know, she's a, a central figure in this current, um, sexual harassment scandal that is kind of rocking booktube. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have much to say about it other than go watch Amy's video. Uh, I'll throw my support uh, behind that. But um, what I wanted to recommend actually uh, with Amy and the Dusty Bookshelf is actually her Friday reads. She is like a master of Friday reads. And I don't think I've really talked about that before, even though I'm a big fan of Friday reads in general. I like doing them myself and I really like hers in particular. Um, now I haven't watched her, uh, the one of hers that came out today or last night, but last week's Friday reads was like a, a perfect example of why I love her Friday reads so much. It was just her kind of going down this rabbit hole with W Somerset mom. Um, and it wasn't like, you know, part of a reading challenge. It wasn't her setting up like some TBR and inviting people to join. It was just like a very organic, uh, you know, her following her own tastes and her own instincts. And, and that's what I like about her. Like she knows her own taste and she knows what she likes to read and she just reads it. And that's why her channel and what she reads is, um, unique among booktube channels, I would say. Uh, so while I haven't read a lot of mom myself, I read the painted veil and it was kind of meh, uh, hearing her talk about him and his work was really great and she uh talked about this book that's like a collection of magazine articles that he wrote it's called books and you and it's really written in the style of a book blog like it's just him sort of going off on books he likes and books he doesn't like and making recommendations and i found out that this thing is actually available on project gutenberg so i'll link to that below because uh, like i've just sort of 
quickly scanned it, but it, it's really fun. And it's the sort of hidden gem that I would never have found on my own. So only someone like Amy is gonna kind of unearth these things. So, <clears throat> excuse me, go check her channel out. Um, you know, check out the her statement on, you know, what's going on in BookTube, certainly if you need to catch up or you're uncertain of what's going on, but do check out her Friday reads as well. Um, also, of course, Adam from Memento Mori has returned from his annual hibernation, which is ironic because he lives in a place that doesn't really have winter, but um, he does this every year. So he's back with the mid-year book freakout tag, which he does every year. Um, so that was just really good to see, and I'll be doing that one pretty soon. And uh, finally, Rick from another book vlog is back after a bit of a hiatus, and you know somehow he's come back with I think two. 25 30 minute videos that were like single book reviews and he's still getting tons of views and comments and i'm like how <laughs> like i haven't even watched the second one yet because you know i got things to do who has 25 minutes well apparently lots of people do so that's great the latest one is on a little life which i have been really holding off of because of the hype and because her previous novel destroyed me and the people in the trees. But, uh, you know, once I watch his take on it, maybe that'll push me to finally pick the thing up. Um, so that's it. That's Friday Reads. I'll maybe go do some actual reading now. Thanks for watching.